and welcome to Jeremy's Retro Bar. I'm Jeremy and this is my Retro Bar and this week we're going to be trying four different methods to get in a hard drive working in this Leading Technologies 286. But of course first, we're going to need to make ourselves a drink. So for this week's drink, we're not messing around with mocktails, we're going back to hard alcohol. And uh, with this, we're going to be making an old fashioned. I'm going to start off with a cup full of ice. Then we're gonna add two ounces of your favorite bourbon, one quarter ounce simple syrup, one dash orange bitters, one dash Angostura bitters, and we stir. And then we'll just strain that into a rocks glass. And there we have an old fashioned. Cheers. I love an old fashioned. All right. Let's get to making this 286 work again. So I read the comments and there was a lot of them about things that I can do to possibly make this machine work. I was on vacation for two weeks. This is my first day back and I'm excited to get started with some of the suggestions. So the four ideas that I have for getting a hard drive to work are uh, first is uh, make the battery work again. So I'm gonna install one of these external batteries and uh, then CMOS will remember its settings and possibly I can get the original hard drive working. Second is I got a SCSI card that has a BIOS. Now, technically my old one that I had also had a BIOS. Uh, a lot of people pointed out that the BIOS chip uh, was installed on, the, on a SCSI card that normally doesn't have a BIOS. Uh, this one, though, has a BIOS and a floppy controller. Well, then we get both. We get a SCSI and floppy on one card with no resource conflict. Uh, and then, of course, I can go with the classic XT IDE with the compact flash adapter. And the other is an XT IDE with an SD adapter. So this one's a little newer um, and has an SD card instead of compact flash card. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and try all these out. One of these will work. And, uh, and then I can run some benchmarks and see which one I decide to ultimately go with in this Leading Technologies 286. So let's get started. So one of the first things that people thought I could try is that the hard drive might not be dead that it came with and that it just needs the CMOS to retain its memory to know the drive geometry of the hard drive. So I'm gonna be using this external six volt adapter, which uses four double uh, A's or triple A's. So uh, we've got a, uh, pin headers I'm gonna add here for an external battery, and hopefully that should take care of it. So let's get started. A lot of times these hard drives will have the drive geometry <laughs> written here. And this one, you can faintly see, just says none. <laughs> All right, I'll have to look it up. <laughs> so I just looked up the drive geometry of this and it actually turns out that it's a 43 megabyte hard drive. So that is more in line with what I remember this machine having. So that's pretty cool, so. Um, yeah, I've got the specs pulled up over here on my fancy new Mac Mini. Okay, let's see if C shows up. It does. Oh. Hmm. I, I guess the hard drive is not working or the data is somehow not there anymore. That's too bad. Okay. 
Even though the hard drive had been wiped, I went ahead and did a clean install of the OS and went ahead and ran a benchmark anyway so I could compare it to the numbers of the other solutions. So, unfortunately, our hard drive method didn't work. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. There's nothing on the hard drive. Let's go ahead and try method number two, which is the SCSI card. This is an AHA. 1522A. Yeah, we're gonna try using it in replacement of the of the floppy controller as well. So we're gonna pull that out, put this in, and see where we're at. All right, we have everything hooked up and ready to go. So let's test this SCSI card. Nice, they show up, and come on, HyperDust 1.1, yes, check it out, <laughs> HyperDust by leading technology, oh man, this is great, all right, so let's exit and run a benchmark real quick, let's see where we're at. So we're just going to do a hard disk speed, and we're just going to test the first drive. Okay. <laughs> so it thinks that maybe the index might be off, but we can see that it gets an 11.5. Western Digital gets a 14.5. Seven. So these are all much later, more advanced hard drives. So the fact that this is on a 286, I think is a pretty good sign. So, excellent. So as you can tell by my shirt, this is actually a separate day from when I started this project, but just some information uh, for reference. So first of all, <laughs> the whole reason that the SCSI didn't boot in the last episode was that I did not have the SCSI ID set correctly. Now, when I got this SCSI card, I actually got it new in box, um, which I, I think I said earlier, I did an unboxing on my uh, membership channel, and it had a manual, and I read the manual, and in the manual it said, basically only two SCSI devices can be hard drives, and if you want it to boot, the SCSI ID has to be set to zero. I had been setting the SCSI ID, which for the blue SCSI you set in the naming of your disk image file, and I had set it to one, uh, I think two and three. So I had done one, two, and three um, as the SCSI ID and didn't think of setting it to be zero. So um, yeah, if you're using an ISA SCSI adapter that's by Adaptec, Chances are pretty good that you'll need to, if you want to boot from that hard drive, you'll need to set that SCSI ID to zero. That's great that I figured that out finally by reading the manual. Um, and then the second hard drive is set to SCSI ID one and that shows up as well. Uh, so zero and one if you're doing two hard drives. Uh, I have it set up so I have a, a base OS hard drive which is 500 meg, and then I have a games hard drive, which is a gig. The other thing that I had to do is I did have to upgrade to DOS 5. And I had to upgrade to DOS 5 because it had memory management. Now, I know I probably could have just stayed with DOS 4 and gotten a memory manager and had it load my mouse drivers uh, into upper memory, but it was just a lot easier to do DOS 5. So I went ahead and installed DOS 5 on here. So unfortunately, this won't be as cursed of a machine as I kind of wanted it to be uh, by putting that on. Okay, so now we know where we're at, uh, how we got the SCSI to work. Now, the other thing is both XT IDE adapters did not work in this machine. And I think it's partially just because it's a late model 286 and it's just a little weird. Um, but the SD one would boot to the menu. I got the selector menu. I could select A or C or whatever, um, but I couldn't get it to boot to the SD card uh, any of the times that I tried it. And I put both DOS 4 and DOS 5 on it and both times it would not boot. I clean wiped the SD card both times, still wouldn't do it. 
the IDE one didn't even show up. I didn't even get the XT IDE menu and I switched the, the dip switches to get every memory uh, configuration that it would support. Um, so like where in memory uh, this thing comes in. I'm guessing there's some sort of conflict between the VGA card, which I know has its own BIOS and, uh, and the computer. Uh, I don't know, maybe, but yeah, neither of those worked. So um, the good news is that the SCSI, uh, the SCSI solution does work. So the SCSI is gonna be the solution that we use going forward. Now, what do we have left with us for today? So uh, first off, uh, where did I put it? Here it is. First off, I printed, 3D printed a bracket that is gonna go into an ISA slot to hold my blue SCSI. And second of all, I still wanna install the Pico Gus to emulate uh, the original Sound Blaster in this machine. So let's get to putting these in and getting the Pico Gus up and running. And hopefully we can get this feeling like I remember this machine feeling. So, all right, let's get to that. Unfortunately, this section got lost because of a recording error, so we'll just do it as voiceover. Uh, essentially, there was just two things that were said. One is the Pico Gus is installed in Sound Blaster mode, so it's going to emulate the sound of a Sound Blaster. And two, I am using my original Sharp Boombox as the speakers, because when I had purchased my sound card, I didn't realize you had to get se uh, speakers separate. So anyway, here it is. Uh, the sounds of some of my favorite games on this 286. Well, that does it for probably the most nostalgic episode I'll ever make uh, of uh, Jeremy's Retro Bar. Uh, how crazy is it to finally get the machine that I did my uh, better part of maturing on? Uh, I've got my OG speakers, my OG mouse, the keyboard that it came with. The only thing it's missing is the monitor. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's such a cool machine. Obviously a little slow for some of the games that I played on it, but it worked and that's what I had. So uh, yeah, I'm very excited about this. 
Uh, if you guys want to see more about the Leading Technologies machine or maybe more of a in-depth rundown of HyperDOS or something like that, let me know in the comments. Um, but on the, that's, yeah, that's about it for this episode. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me through my dumbness on not, not knowing certain things with the SCSI card, not reading the manual, not having a manual, uh, not reading the manual. Uh, so yeah, but it was a fun adventure. I'm glad I finally got it up and working and I'm very excited to add it to my collection. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you next time.